the spiral staircase, one of the greatest exercises that I've ever learned in my entire life. My sensei, my teacher, Jeremy Levine at We Art Play, show me the light with this one. Not, not, he didn't show me the light, but he did show me this exercise, and this exercise has changed kind of everything about uh, how I play. So we're going to dive into it. You know, the beauty of this exercise is that it really helps you to isolate and see your, uh, your kind of like f fingering taboos or obstacles, you know, the kind of places where you get caught up, but you don't even realize you're caught up, and then you develop these like unhealthy patterns, you know, and this is a little bit, uh, when it gets a little bit outside of just playing scales up and down, when you're not just playing scales and you're starting to move around a little bit, you know, and start to play a little bit more, you start to see uh, some stumbling spots with this exercise, and so it really helps to smooth those out and, and help you to be freer, uh, you know, to be more confident, and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna dive into that and hopefully alleviate some of those problems today. So first things first, we need some sort of parameter that we can apply the spiral staircase to. So we're gonna kinda like break this down into like a, a bunch of different parameters. The first parameter that we need is some kind of scale to staircase, right? We need like, Staircase, we need something that we can go up and down in, and so we're gonna use a scale. Now you can use all kinds of stuff. As you get more comfortable with it, you can use, uh, you can use different kinds of scales. You can use like pentatonic scales. Uh, you can get into like modal stuff. You can use chord tones. You can use everything. But what we're gonna do, uh, the easiest way, and like the, the most, I think, effective way to start this is with uh, just some, some scales, major or minor. We're gonna start with the C scale. So if you don't know your scales very well, if you're kinda like, I don't know, uh, maybe I shouldn't start with scales, go to weartplay.com, check out the Piano Fundamentals course that's there, and that's going to give you everything you need so that you're not double thinking when you're trying to do these kinds of exercises to get freer. Uh, so yeah, so if you don't know your scales, check out the Piano Fundamentals course, and then if you do, let's get to it. So we're going to start with the C scale. It's all white keys. We're going to start here, we're going to end here for now. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, now, inside of our C scale parameter, we are going to look intervallically at chunks of this. So the way that the spiral staircase really works is that we move up and down in intervals. And this is like the first kind of stumbling spot for people. Uh, we're looking at it and, and we're kind of counting up and down instead of looking at it and breaking it down in intervals, right? So we're going to start with fourths because fourths seems to be kind of the clearest one because we actually have some ascending and some like descending stuff happening. So if we look at fourths, we got C, F, right? This is our first fourth parameter kind of inside of the C scale. Now if we keep moving up, right, we've got fourths all the way through. And then back down, we've got fourths. And we can keep going until the top note C. That's kind of how we're going to do the spiral staircase. So how this works is when we first start, we're going to ascend from the bottom to the top of our first fourth parameter. So we're going to ascend. Now, as we descend, when we land on the next note, like the first note of our next parameter, which would be D and G, right? We're going from here to here. So when we get down and land on this, this becomes our new starting point. So we don't go back down to C. So we keep moving up the stairs, right? So we're one. Now we're gonna go down to D and up to our next parameter, right? And then down to our next one. Up. Up to here. Now we're going down to our next parameter. Good, yeah. And then when we come down, C has now become our starting note. So we went from one C up to the next C, right? So now we're going to start a descending uh, staircase. So we're moving now down those fourths, right? We're moving down the fourths the same way. So we're moving down up to the next parameter and to the next one. On to the next one, to the next one, and we can keep going. And then we can 
stop on this C. Now that we kind of have these like fourths, uh, you know, in our minds, like we we can kind of visualize how we're moving up and down the the the, the staircase in a sense, right? Uh, we want to refine that because it. It's gonna not do us a lot of good if we're just playing the spiral staircase and we're still using the same kind of like fingering patterns that we were using before because it's not gonna help us like get over the trip ups. But don't get me wrong, just doing the exercise is like a great, great place to start. Obviously you need to do it. So like, yeah, so do it. And then once you do it and you're like, I can do this, then we'll refine it, right? So a couple things to think about as you're playing through the spiral staircase. First thing, we wanna cross over our fingers as few times as possible, right? We don't want, uh, we don't want this, right? We don't want like, we don't want. This is like a crazy amount of crossing happening. This is a lot of crossing. We don't want to just be using these two fingers. We don't want to use just, we don't want to use three. If we don't have to, we've got five fingers. We want to use as many of them as possible as much of the time as we can. Now, obviously, you know, as you like increase the tempo or, you know, as you start to like, you know, play with two hands and all these different things, dynamics come in, it's not going to be some sort of like perfect fingering system. Like this isn't the same way that you would like learn a scale, for example, where you memorize a fingering. This is to kind of help that adaptive part of playing. So it's not going to be like a perfect repetition each time you do the spiral staircase, which is good. Uh, but we want to try to exercise the like intention of using as many fingers as possible. So even when we're doing fourths, we could use our pinky here, right? We wanna cross as few times as possible, right? So yeah, so, so we want to get really good at like be, kind of looking ahead a little bit, thinking like, okay, I've got this first fourth here. I've got this first fourth, and I've, in the next fourth is gonna be within that same grip, right? And then we're gonna need to cross over because we're gonna need to reach this grip. Uh, and as you do this more and more, you'll get more comfortable with it. So take it slow. Take it super slow and really look at what you're doing. Now, another way to kind of uh, zoom in and, and, and test yourself after you start to get really comfortable is starting on a different finger. So we're normally, obviously, we want to use as many fingers as possible, so we're starting with our thumb. Uh, but what happens if you start with your pointer finger? If you start the scale with your pointer finger, you cross over right away. But you've got all the way up to the A before you have to cross over again, which is great. So it's training this adaptive nature, right? We're training this ability to improvise and not have to think about our fingers. We just have to think about direction. We can think about the stuff that, uh, you know, that matters. We can think about the notes that we want to play. We can think about the rhythms. We don't have to think about, oh, is my ring finger going to do the thing? We don't have to think about that. That's, I think that's a good goal. That's a good goal. Let's go ahead and get out of the key of C. Let's get out of the all white keys thing and see how this looks when we kind of uh, change the obstacles, right? So now we're gonna add some black keys. Let's go key of three flats. Let's do E flat major. Uh, so now we have these three flats that are gonna be obstacles for us. But we still have the same goals, right? We still wanna maximize the amount of fingers we use before we do any crossing. Uh, we still wanna follow our like intervallic parameters. We still wanna follow our scale. Uh, we still wanna play rhythmically and smoothly. So it's the same thing, but it's different. I don't know what that means, but we're gonna do it. So let's change the intervals also. So let's not uh, stay on fourths kind of through here, but let's go up to fifths. Let's see what it looks like when we also change the intervals. Uh, because with the spiral staircase, we can do intervals from thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, eighths, ninths. You can do ninths. You can do all the way up nine, all the way back down. You can do tenths. You can do two octaves if you really wanted to. I'm not gonna, but if you really wanted to, you could do two full octaves of spiral staircase, up and down and up and down. I think it might actually benefit you more to, to not do two octaves, but live your truth. Live your truth. So we're gonna do fifths, right? So here's our fifths, right? This is our fifths in E flat. Good, so, and then back down, we'll have these fifths as well. 
So same basic principle. We're gonna start here. We've got five fingers, so our first, you know, our first one can be all five. We can. Now we're going back down. We're going to our next parameter, which is F to C. Now we're gonna go G to D. A flat to E flat. I'm crossing under here. And I'm gonna do this little this little touch over, boop, bam. Now C to G. Now D to A flat. And then we're back to E flat. So there's, you know, it's the same relative thing. It's the same spiral staircase, right? But there's some different techniques that we have to use, you know, as we have these black keys, obviously we're, we've got some different things. So that technique, the, the little, little, little reach over, the little reach over and whoop, boop, the little boop, boop, little reach over and tap, great, great skill. Instead of resetting your hands in, entirely, getting comfortable doing that. And we'll look at that as we descend now through the E flat uh, spiral staircase. So we'll go. And I just started on a random finger. I didn't even think about it. So we're gonna go C, F. Now we're watching this, we're gonna do B flat. And we're gonna do that little reach over and tap. Boop. And then up to A flat, down to D. Then to G, down to C. F to B flat, reach over, boop, there it is. And then we're back home, we're back at E flat, baby, let's go, it's that easy. So then, right, we've, we've, we're getting comfortable now, we're getting comfortable, we're maximizing fingers, we are playing rhythmically, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're ascending and we're descending and we're using those little techniques and, and it's starting to get really comfortable, right? So like the next thing that you can do is start to chain together these intervals, right? So we can go straight from fourths into fifths without stopping. So let's pretend we're, uh, we're here, we're at G, and we're doing the descending uh, fourths, right? So we're gonna, do, we're gonna do the fourths. And then once we get done with the fourths, watch what's gonna happen. We're gonna go directly into the fifths. So, so we'll go to F to C. Now watch this, E flat up to B flat because now we're doing the fifths. Ooh, it's smooth, it's like butter. We're just going right into the next interval, right? And we can do that, we can keep going. So each time you kind of do the full run, you go up and down, just see if you can chain it to the next interval, right? And, and that's, gonna, that's, that's where it's gonna get, uh, you know, a little more complicated, but uh, a little bit more rewarding also, right? Uh, so try that, you know, get comfortable with that. And obviously there's always more things that we can do to uh, you know, maximize the results of, of any exercise. We can always make it a little harder. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that now. We're gonna talk about like, how can we make it a little bit more uh, fruitful. There's a couple other things that we can do to kind of, I don't know, add difficulty or you know, add intention to, to our playing. And the first thing is playing to a metronome. Right, there are ways to play uh, with a metronome. There's like a billion different ways, I'm sure, uh, infinite different ways to play with a metronome. And the first way is the way that we've done thus far, is playing on the beat, right? Each time we've got our beat, our one, two, three, four, we're gonna play a note. Now, obviously, start there. Maybe it's not obvious. If you've never heard that before, start easy. Start on the clicks. Make sure that you can sync up with the click and, and do that until it's extremely comfortable. But what gets difficult is when you start to play the one ands of every beat, every metronome beat. So as we have our metronome going, one and two and three and four and it gets complicated 
based on the different uh, interval because it's a different amount of notes up and down. It does. What happens is it doesn't it doesn't link up just right, right? It just doesn't add up just right. So our metronome is at 65 beats per minute. So we've got one, two, three, four. And we're gonna do one and two and three and four. Now watch what happens. So if we're in E flat and we're playing in fourths, this is what it's gonna sound like if we play those eighth notes. Pretty smooth. It's, it's, it's one of the smoother ones. What happens if we do fifths? Let's try fifths. hit the same way that the fourths did. That one feels weird. It just feels weird because it's it's groups of, of odd numbered notes over like an even beat. So it's not going to link up right, right? You're going to have some beats that are on the on and some beats that are on the not on and it's going to feel uncomfortable. But if you can master that, if you can master running these odd numbered uh, stairs over just like a smooth beat, you will be unstoppable. You will be able to play anything over anything. It doesn't matter what they throw at you. You'll be like, I've got, I've got my groove. And you're just gonna be running no matter what. You're not gonna have any sort of obstacle in your mind or in your fingers. So try it with the metronome. Get it comfortable on the beat first. Get it comfortable just playing on the beats, you know, and you can always speed your metronome up. You can always speed your metronome up and still play on the beats. But once you get comfortable, slow that metronome down again and hit those one and two ands, right? And the last thing is once you are very comfortable with one hand, you want to do it with the other hand, right? You want to do it with the, if you're doing it with, you start with your left hand, you want to do it with your right hand afterwards. And once you do it with your left hand and your right hand, and they are even. Well, we're piano players. We want to do it with both hands. We want to be able to do it at the same time with both hands. So let's go E flat, key of three flats. Let's do fifths again. We'll do the fifth interval, but we're going to do it now with two hands. And we're going to see uh, what that looks like because everything that you know thus far is you're gonna have to hope and, and, and believe that you've put in the work with one of them. You don't have uh, those like crazy like chameleon eyes where you can do this, bloop, and, and then right, focus on two things with one brain. So you're gonna have to kind of, you're gonna have to kind of be choosy with which, which hand you focus on, unless you're swiveling, I don't know. We'll figure it out. So let's do E flat uh, fifths. slipped up a couple times you know I'm still obviously I practice these spiral staircases almost every single day because I can recognize the benefit from them because right no matter how well I get it if I change the tempo or if I if I change playing eighth notes or quarter notes against the metronome or if I change the scale if I change the parameter right if I change it from fifths to sixths or sevenths it's always kind of different and and and, and so it's, it keeps me uh, practicing and it keeps me uh, honest right so I hope that 
this helps you in some way. I hope that uh, kind of zooming into this exercise helps kind of alleviate some of those problems or hangups for you. And yeah, you know, I hope that it makes you a little more confident, makes you a little freer. Hope you're playing smoother. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Until then, peace.